Sponsored by Bangta, Sustainable Business Development in Harmony with the Environment and Society. The International Labour Organization, or the ILO, works to promote social justice and pushes for the principle of human rights. So today, toward 2015, take you guys to listen to the vision of the new Director General of the ILO, Guy Ryder. So the labor direction of Thailand is set to change more or less, especially due to the government policy of the daily minimum wage increase. So Thai labor will now have to concentrate more on building skill as the country will no longer be under the low-wage labor category. Well, I think there's much in the labor situation in, in Thailand which is positive. Um, you have quite good economic growth rates, quite low uh, unemployment. So this is a good start. Uh, but I do think that um, Thailand faces some challenges. Um, one of those, of course, is how to make sure that the economic growth, the benefits of economic growth are shared fairly and how it produces social progress. Um, I think that is the objective of economic growth, to improve the lives of people. Uh, so I think that uh, Thailand faces some important challenges uh, to put social insurance, health and education services in place for everybody. I think that's very important because you have an ageing population as well and Thailand is going to have to look after its old people and more and more old people with fewer people working in the future. So that's going to place some strains I think on the country. Uh, you also have of course the question of, of wages. I know there's an important discussion taking place about the minimum wage, the 300 baht yes. minimum wage. I think this is a very important issue and one where I think uh, there could be strong benefits for working people. And the other issue of course which I have talked about with colleagues here is, is the situation of migrant workers uh, where you are trying I think to, to, to have the validation of nationality take place with a view to improving their position. So. These are important questions. Uh, the ILO also attaches a lot of importance uh, to the ratification by Thailand of two of the conventions that the ILO has. These are Convention 87, which concerns freedom of association, the right to organize, and Convention 98 on collective bargaining. Um, I said both to the Minister of Labor yesterday and also to the Prime Minister this morning when she received me uh, that we hope very much that Thailand would be able to ratify uh, these conventions soon and they've told me that the issue is before Parliament uh, and uh, hopefully will get favourable consideration by Parliament next year, that it's a question of time. So I hope that will happen because I think it's very important for Thailand uh, to ratify these conventions. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier about the economic growth, so how could we balance between the economic growth and uh, liberalized protections? Mm. Well, you know, economic growth in itself, I think, is the precondition uh, to improve uh, working people's uh, lives and to improve your societies. Yes. Uh, but the question is how you convert that growth into social progress. And uh, there are a number of ways you do that. Uh, the first is to make sure that workers' rights are respected, uh, that workers can join unions if they want to, and that those unions can bargain to get a fair share. This is the way that workers take a fair share uh, of economic growth and distributes growth uh, equally, or fairly, I should say. The second, which I've already mentioned, uh, is the question of social protection the question of uh, pension, health and unemployment coverage. You know, if something bad happens, you may, I may have a good job today, but tomorrow something bad may happen to me. And you need systems of insurance and social protection uh, to cover you in those circumstances. And I think Thailand is looking at those issues, as are many other uh, Asian countries. Um, but also perhaps in addition to the migrant workers uh, question, there are the questions that still remain to be resolved of issues like child labour. Uh, tomorrow I'll be going to look at some of the shrimp and uh, seafood industry situations. I'll be visiting some of the projects that uh, we are running in cooperation with the Thai government to try to make sure that problems of child labour are got rid of. I think Thailand is really in a position to eliminate this type of problem and we hope that with our 
cooperation, that we can help move in that direction. Child labor is a major factor that will hinder the true potential of children, the seed of the nation's future workforce. So one of the international goals of the ILO is to eliminate this form of abuse. So for the ILO, how does Thailand bode under this move toward 2015? So what do you think about the child labor here in Thailand? Well, I, I'm going to look at it tomorrow. Uh, the Minister of Labour uh, told me that uh, he recognises there are things that Thailand still needs to do. Um, but, you know, with Thailand's level of development today uh, and Thai Thailand's level of, of, of wealth, uh, I think there is every reason to believe that uh, you can get rid of, uh, you can get rid of child labour. It's not something which is inevitable. It's not something uh, which cannot be avoided. Uh, so I hope that the government will give top priority uh, to, to this question. It's certainly something which attracts international attention and sometimes criticism uh, of Thailand. Uh, the minister told me that he thinks that some of this criticism is, uh, is not fair, is not accurate, is based on a misunderstanding sometimes. And if that's true, I think the best way that Thailand can react to it is by demonstrating a very clear determination not just in words, but in actions uh, to finish child labour. And that is what the cooperation with the ILO tries to do. So how about child labour station in other country in, in this region? Do you have any particular concern about this issue? Very much so. Uh, the ILO has an international programme for the elimination of, of, of child labour. Uh, and it exists in many countries uh, around the world. We estimate that uh, over 200 million children are still at work. We make a distinction. We make a distinction between child labour in general and what we call the worst forms of child labour. And the worst forms of child labour are those which damage the health, the security or the moral well-being of children. And we want to see priority given to the elimination of these worst forms of child labour. And we've set a target for the total elimination by 2016. And there is a major world conference on child labour which will take place next year in Brazil, where we hope to discuss these issues some more. So what is the main issue for the child labour? Well, uh, there are many issues. Uh, the fact of the matter is that most children at work are working in the agricultural, the rural sector, or in the informal economy. So these have to be, I think, uh, priorities uh, for us. But, you know, we've come a very long way in a short space of time. I think perhaps 20 years ago, People said, well, child labour, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's inevitable when there is poverty and underdevelopment. I think we've moved from that sort of fatalistic attitude to a situation where we say, look, if we really want to, if we're really ready to make it a priority, we can eliminate child labour. It's not something that has to wait until we get richer. We can do it now. So I think that awareness and that political will is vitally important on child labour. We'll come back after a short break for more perspectives coming up from Guy Ryder of the regional development in the future and the tasks that Thailand must perform to embrace its transformation.